hatching, you can do other things, but it also slows down leaks. So just by getting down to zero, you can hear how much less that is. There's no pressure on it. There's no pressure at all. That's just like a gas fire. It's just a regular old vapor fire coming off the top of a liquid because there's no more pressure feeding that. And that pressure's not able to feed the leaks either. So step one in any emergency response for a flammable gas like this is get the pressure down. And we're going to flare vapor, always vapor for pressure. So no noise at all. We're down to zero PSI. I don't need a gauge to tell me that. I got my ears. I know I'm at zero PSI. Well, now I can move in here and patch all the holes that are in here. And I'm going to do that with a freeze patch. Uh, a freeze patch is just a wet rag. And you can see how water expands on the rag and forms around that valve. And I'm using the valve here on the bottom. Um, and this, I did this before lunch. And it's still frozen in place. So we're using that, that weird quality of water that it expands when it freezes, unlike everything else on the planet that contracts when it freezes. And it even feels, you can even see the threads. Mm. See the threads yeah. in the cloth there? That's ah. how good it is at, at conforming to different forms. I mean, look at the shape of that valve. I'm able to patch that valve with this rag because it expands out. It comes out and fills in all those little nooks and crannies and will slow down or stop your leak. And if you can't get it stopped all the way with the rag, you just add some more rags. That's all a freeze patch is. But you have to make sure you've got that pressure down first. Otherwise, it's just going to spray all the water away. It's going to push your rag out of the hole. Shut you down for a minute. Another problem we run into is that people think you're always going to see it as a gas. You're not. It takes about 15 minutes for the average hazmat team to arrive on scene, even inside the city. In that 15 minutes, this container's been sitting there leaking out, right? Um, it's leaking out beside the road, and what that's doing is it's super cooling the ground everywhere it's leaked out, just like it's super cooling this bowl. So what you'll walk up on is liquid propane. So if you've got gloves, you can hold this. Just a little cold, negative 44. <laughs> Not like a little frostbite to make your day go work. But that's what's happening inside or outside the container when it gets out. Super cools the ground, just like it super cools this bowl. Start to see that frost develop on the bottom? Mm -hmm. And then on the top, it's insulating itself because it's trying to evaporate away. Energy's going up, not down into it. So the, you can't have any energy coming in from the bottom because the ground's all negative 44 around it. No energy can come in from the top because of that evaporation that's occurring. And then there's this layer of negative 44 right on top. So in order to heat up that liquid and cause it to boil, I've got to go through that layer, through that evaporation. It's just not going to happen. So you're going to come up on propane just like this. The colder it is, the longer it'll stay, but you will find liquid propane laying beside the road. You'll also find any other liquefied gas beside the road. So this is another reason not to, tr to say that a clear liquid is going to be water. I mean, I'm holding a bowl of propane. Is it boiling? It's not even creating that much vapor that you can see. That little bit that you see is the air getting cold. It's not propane. It, this is even hard to detect on a monitor. The lower the temperature, the harder it is going to be to detect. But I mean, we just got to stay so low. Yep, just sitting there, self-insulating itself. Yeah. Now, if I get it up on the side of the bowl, you can see it boil. But it's flash cooling the bowl, and then see the second pass around, it stopped. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what happens on the ground. So the colder it is, the longer that effect's going to last. I mean, do you ever think though that you'd be able to hold a bowl of propane? Yeah. I mean, nobody considers that it takes energy to cause that to, to vaporize. It wants to stay a liquid because it's already been turned into a liquid. It takes energy to cause it to convert and become a, a, a gas. So this is how you'll find it laying beside the road. The railroad comes in all the time and tells us about when they go, go into wrecking operations after they've already got the, the tracks back open, they've already took care of all the hazmat, they'll pull a propane car out of a divot in the ground and there'll be a big giant puddle of propane underneath it. Three, four days later. Wow. 80 degrees outside and they're finding liquid propane underneath these cars three or four days later. Wow. We so, try to recover the material and burn it off? Just burn it off. Throw it away. Uh, that brings me to liquid flare, which a liquid flare is just lighting liquid on fire. Um, so all you're going to do is run a hose out to a pit and set it on fire. <laughs> That's it. But look down inside that bowl. So watch what, do you see it boiling? Yeah. Well, not really. So it's just on the right around the edge. So what's going to happen here is it's not the propane itself. Since it's so well insulated, the propane isn't boiling off. What's going to happen is it's going to heat up that bowl, and as the bowl heats up, you'll see it start to bubble around the outside of the bowl first, and as that, that heat from the bowl travels around, then it starts to boil the center of the propane. But you see how long it even took it to get to the middle? Because the propane coming off the top is cooling the bowl as well. 
So the fire is trying to heat it up and the evaporating propane that's coming up through the fire is actually cooling the bowl back down. So the cooling effect of the propane is actually fighting the fire. And that's why this fire isn't causing massive amounts of pressure is because it's self-cooling. So that, that cooling effect is bringing the temperature down and keeping the vapor pressure down. The fire is trying to pull those off and the two are fighting each other. But that's all a liquid flare is. You're just throwing a flare in there. Um, so that if, if, if you had a puddle that was there that you needed to dispose of, we're going to come at that puddle from uphill, upwind, upstream, you know, always from an angle. We're going to have a monitor on us and we're going to be wearing our, our structural gear. If that monitor ever starts to show any LEL at all, I'm not upwind, right? So we're going to approach that pit, we're going to have built a, a, a berm around it, and you're just going to throw a fusee in there and let it burn off. And, it, and this is going to happen. It's not going to be a big explosion like everybody thinks. Um, you're going to have everybody in a safe zone. You're going to use monitors to tell where that's at, and then we're just going to burn it off. But that's all a liquid flare is. You're just pumping liquid into a pit, setting it on fire. So from a plan perspective, if you're actually planning on doing a liquid flare for disposing of the product, you're going to dig a pit, run a hose, bury the hose, put your fusees in the pit, and then open the valve. So that way the liquid's going to spray out, get into its, in, into its LELs, ignite, and then the churning action of putting liquid into that pit will break that insulation barrier and more of it will lock it. That gives you more fire and a faster burn. Make sense?